As mentioned last week, you're going to have more of the same this week for one more week. Um, so just a little bit of a, adjusting the exercises, uh, adjusting the lows up just a little bit, uh, basically just giving you giving you those those progressions and um, again just trying to get some some good clean uh, technique work in to um, uh, kind of prep you and stimulate stimulate you for what we're uh, going to be going into starting week three, which is going to be the week after this week. Um, a couple of little picky things that I want to go over, I want to take this opportunity, but I uh, just want you to be sure and kind of pay attention to the details. I know there's a lot of writing in the program, um, there's a lot of videos attached, and it can be very easy, easy to overlook those things. It can be very easy to zero in on uh, the actual exercise and the sets and reps and just do it and think that you're good to go. But make sure you read over everything, take that extra time to do that, and take that extra time to watch all the videos because I've seen uh, you know, over and over again examples of athletes or it's a video that I see online somewhere from someone that I know is on the program um, and uh, again just doing the exercise kind of completely wrong and not getting out of it what we want so moral to the story make sure you read the program read the entire program make sure you understand it and watch the videos to, to make sure that you see uh, exactly what you what we want you to be doing another thing is look out for alternating exercises so there's, they're all over the program in this one. Um, so the A1, A2, A3, or, or whatever it is, those details that you need to pay attention to are there. But anytime it indicates to alternate, make sure you're alternating through those exercises uh, because you're gonna get the most out of each of those exercises from doing so. One example of that is going to be the, um, uh, on day one, the overhead squat, or snatch grip push press plus overhead squat plus an overhead mobility exercise, which is second, the, the second exercise, and then the third exercise being a snatch uh, squat press. So alternating between those three exercises are gonna make, um, in particular, the overhead squat and the um, uh, overhead mobility will make the snatch squat press better or make you even, make someone even able to do the snatch squat press if that's an exercise you struggle with. And then obviously the snatch squat press pressing from behind the neck uh, from the bottom of the squat, if you're able to do that, if you're able to kind of open that up and um, and, and get some reps in there, then obviously it's going to make your uh, overhead squat better. So they all work together. Anytime there's alternating exercises, they work together and they need to be alternated as indicated. All right. A um, couple exercises that I want to give you some tips on and just to make sure uh, that you're doing them correctly. And, I, and you know, I know there's videos on most all the exercises, um, uh, and there's, again, details written in the program. But I wanna take this opportunity to go over a couple, and I talked a little bit about snatch squat press before. Um, if you read the detail or the uh, description portion of the uh, uh, demo video in there, it kinda tells you that if you struggle with this exercise, you can elevate your heels uh, and that kind of thing, or elevate your heels and progress down through the through the uh, same workout or through weeks or through months, whatever you need to do. But I want, just want to confirm that if you're not able to do a snatch squat press uh, with you know, just regular, then yes, as indicated, you can elevate your heels. And let me show you what that looks like uh, just real quick here. So a lot of people will kind of struggle down in this bottom position. And if you struggle down in this bottom position in general, um, you're probably gonna struggle with the snatch squat press. But one of the things is that you know, you're kind of pressing here and you just, you can't quite get it up. Again, if you'll lift your heels, and if this will kind of allow you to just break through that space, uh, however it does, then obviously it allows you to do the exercise and allows us to get more of what we want. Now, as far as elevation goes, you can elevate a little bit more than that. I would recommend not elevating any more than about a uh, 15 pound bumper plate so there's that kind of common thickness that that has uh, and again if you can get to an elevation to where you can break through that space um, then you can try to slowly progress down either within the same workout um, or through weeks and again that overhead mobility stretch that's done before that uh, accompanied with the overhead squats um, that combination may allow you to get one where you never have before now, if you just uh, aren't able to do it even with elevation uh, up to as much as that 15 pound plate, another option is just to get on, on a box right here. So 
I'm gonna have the, the bar on my back here with the snatch grip. I'm gonna go down. And what I want you to think about here is trying to stay just a little bit forward like this. So instead of sitting completely upright, stay just a little bit forward so you kind of mimic the bottom position, the, the back angle and the bottom position of that squat. Now again, if you need to go back a little bit, uh, get a little bit more upright to be able to press that, then go ahead and do that. And what we want to do here is just slowly progress a little bit further, further and further forward, being able to press up there. And hopefully eventually get you to where you can at least do the snatch squat press um, with uh, your heels elevated where you can hopefully eventually do it on the level surface. And really that's, that's, that's gotta be always the goal is to be able to do all these exercises without any assistance, but we'll definitely use assistance uh, where we need to. All right guys, any questions on that? If that's a, still a little bit confusing to you, don't uh, be afraid uh, to reach out, but get that exercise in if at all possible. Last case scenario would be just to do a snatch uh, strict press from a standing position. Okay, uh, reverse snatch deadlift. Just want to confirm on that that that's or and clean deadlift that that's those are just snatch and clean deadlifts. So I still want you picking it up correctly. I still want you to pick it up thinking snatch deadlift, clean deadlift. That's all it is. All the reverse is is just putting your focus on the reverse portion of the lift. And again, read through there. It's going to indicate. Um, I believe this week is five seconds uh, in reverse. So from standing to the floor. So if this was my um, uh, me with the bar in the start position, I'm going to do a reverse snatch deadlift. So first of all, I have to pick it up correctly, hit my position, keep the bar close, and then in reverse, I'm going to go five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And uh, again, watch the uh, demo video on there. You'll you'll have a little bit more description and um, a little bit of a better uh, demo on that, but. Just basically putting your focus on the reverse portion of the lift, moving very slowly, trying to hit those uh, same positions, key position being with the bar above the knee, okay? Now, uh, in there this week, which wasn't in there last week, is going to be a power clean with a pause below the knee. So if you've been on my programs before, you've done a lot of pausing above the knee. We have done uh, some snatches and cleans from below the knee, but we've never really done anything picking it up and pausing below the knee and then going from there. So I just want to show you what that position looks like. And this is going to go uh, for <coughs> the day where you have um, a power snatch from below the knee as well. So that below knee position where it's at is not just anywhere below the knee. For now, we can't go anywhere below the knee, but for now, once you're touching the bottom of the kneecap, that's what I want, okay? So whereas if you were going to pause above the knee, we would want the bar to touch the top of the kneecap. Again, I don't want it to be here. I don't want it to be here. I want it to be right at this point. But when we go below the knee, I want it to be touching the bottom of the kneecap. Now notice what happened when I went below the knee, my knees went forward and out slightly. So instead of this uh, vertical shin position or close to it, we have a slightly forward shin with uh, the knees slightly further out than normal. That's the ideal, more ideal position that I'm looking for. So. I don't want you just to go here. You see how my knees are back? We need to be a little bit forward with that bar below the knee. So that in that case, whenever you're pausing, you're set up in this position and you're pausing, now you've got this couple inches of leg drive left, so my knees gotta go back slightly further, and then I go from there. Now, uh, a lot of people struggle with that timing. Um, that's something that obviously I can't see on you, and I can't help you make those corrections, but ideally, the timing is uh, slightly forward here, slightly back, and then we're jumping from there, okay? I don't want you going back any further than this point. So if you can take a video of yourself and you notice that you're going back uh, a little bit too long, meaning that you've gone back more than with the bar above the knee, so you see this right here, it's gonna cause separation. You notice my toes are lifting, and it cause my toes to come off and can cause the bar to just stay out or an opposite reaction the other way. But if you notice that in your lift and you wanna to try to nail that down a little bit, slow things down, give yourself a different cue to try to work against the, uh, the, the timing that I would say is a little bit off. But below, uh, power, uh, power clean with uh, pause below the knee, now you're gonna come from the floor and you're gonna pause right here. Again, in that position that is still with the knee slightly forward and then go from there. Okay. 
Uh, last one is gonna be the clean and jerk complex that you're gonna see on uh, the last day of the program. And it's gonna be clean deadlift plus hang clean plus jerk dip plus jerk, all right? One clean deadlift, basically all that is is just telling you to, like I indicated at the beginning of the program, telling you to give me a good quality clean deadlift, standing up back tight, bar close, hitting good positions, all that stuff. You're then gonna lower to above the knee and do one clean. And then what's indicated after that are three jerk dips and then one jerk. So take your time through those jerk dips. That's really the big thing that I want to uh, talk about here. So you're gonna go through one clean deadlift, one hang clean, three jerk dips. So I want these separated. So I'm gonna take my time and breathe. And then I'm gonna go into the jerk right after that. Won't demo the jerk, kinda of got too many things in my way here. But um, jerk dip, notice if you'll go back and re rewind this and watch the jerk dips that I did, I want that dip to be very straight, as straight as possible. So shoulders staying over the hips and that really means that my knees have to go forward and out a lot to maintain this. So if my knees don't go forward enough or out enough, then it's gonna send my hips back and my shoulders forward. So this really set straight, and that's why we do a lot of wall dips, uh, dipping against the wall, is to teach you that straight dip. Taking your time between reps is gonna allow you to practice the rhythm that, that you need on the jerk. So taking your time, getting a good couple breath, breaths in, making sure you're braced properly so when you take that deep breath, shoulders aren't shrugged up, but they fall back down, so and then go from there. You're gonna should be moving very slowly on the jerk dips, and don't be afraid to move that slow on the actual jerk as well. The only difference is that when you get to the bottom of that dip and you change direction, that's when you're gonna to start to move very, very fast, as fast as you can, to put power into that uh, exercise, okay? So one clean deadlift, one hand clean, three jerk dips, take your time, take your time, and one uh, jerk. All right, guys? So uh, I'll leave it at that for this week, but remember um, next week, or the following week, week three of uh, 12, that I'll be here to talk to you about uh, in another week, is gonna look completely different. So make it through this week. Again, take this opportunity to, to refine some things and, and uh, pay attention to the details of the program like I indicated, watch the videos, make sure we're doing everything correctly, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, something um, different in week three. All right, take care, guys.